To someone just visiting, Southeast Idaho might look like a paragon of wild and untouched land. But those who live here on the border of Yellowstone National Park know this is not by accident. Effective conservation takes a lot of effort by a lot of people. Millions of recreators pass through this area every year and mingling among them are grizzly bears. I am undeniably fortunate in knowing the people who, for the most part, thanklessly make living amongst bears possible. We're outside Island Park, Idaho with Jeremy Nicholson. He's the lead grizzly bear biologist for Idaho's Region 6, and we're out here trapping grizzly bears. First and foremost, we have all our bear sprays on, but as even in the vehicle, we approach it, and we're just always vigilant looking around for anything. There could be, worst case scenario, there could be a, a cub in the trap and a female on the outside of the trap, so those situations can be pretty dangerous. So. Um, we make some noise when we get there. I'll blow the horn a lot of times and look around just to scan the area to see if there's any bears that may be setting on the outskirts of the where we're going for. Um, but then once we get out, we'll keep the doors open, have our bear spray on, people will be looking around, um, keep our doors open in case we have to make a hasty retreat just in case anything goes south. So. So we're plenty close to the bear, and the bear's still, oh, he's awake, right? Yeah, he's just, when they're in the culvert trap, they're pretty calm usually unless you start messing with them, so. Okay. Specifically, this is a capture and collar study. Get as much data as we can. That has been going since 1973. The point of which is to track grizzlies and better understand their movement over time. Professionals wait years to be a part of something like this, and well, I'm pretty darn spoiled to be here. This comes at an interesting time too. Shortly after this study began, grizzlies in the lower 48 were listed as threatened under the Federal Endangered Species Act. That's definitely grizzly bear here. While recently, oh. grizz in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem are considered recovered and will soon be back under state management. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He's a, he's a good one, got a healthy head on him. Wow. Even though we're in Idaho, these bears are considered part of the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem, or GYE. While people recognize state lines and park boundaries, bears do not. Meaning, the bear we are about to call her here in Idaho has likely spent time in Montana, Wyoming, and Yellowstone National Park, which is why grizzlies are managed by an interagency team who are in constant communication. He's got some pretty good wear on his claws. He's been uh, he's been working for a living so far. Ideally. Your, what's your margin of error in, in handling time for the bear? Uh, with this drug, um, we have well over an hour that we can do it, and we can usually work it up 45 minutes or so. Um, if, if it's calm, it can stay even down even longer. But um, So what we'll do is we'll jab it, get it down, work the bear up, and then for the bear's safety, we don't want it to be left out on the landscape, um, just setting out there vulnerable. So after we work it up, we'll put it back inside the trap, We'll put water on it, cool it off, and let it sleep for a few more hours and then come back at the end of the day and release it. So we want that bear completely cognizant of everything around it, so we want it to be able to defend itself or anything. So we wait till it really makes sure it's awake. All right, and then you're administering the drug through? So this has several sections, um, and I knock a syringe that can bend. This does not bend, so we have a barrel here that we can put on it and it just slides up and each one of these is a milliliter so we know how much we're putting in there. And we have a little needle. And so we put that on there and when we jab it, it just slides down and injects in there. So it's a really good system of not bending or 
Um, we don't have to hit the bear too hard to make it slide. We put some glide stuff on there that makes it slide easier. So um, had these around ever since I've been doing bear work. Always went with this kind of syringe because the ones with the actual needles, they can give you a little problems and stuff. So gotcha. And if you're happen to quickly get a bear, you want to get it in there and get it out. You don't want to mess around with any needle or anything that's going to bend. So some of them are pretty fired up in there and then other ones are pretty calm and cool like this guy is. And a lot of times the big male bears are common because they're the big dominant bear. So yeah. they don't have as much to be scared of. Like if you get a younger bear in there then or a black bear, they're going to be a little bit more nervous. So those are the ones that are usually pretty fired up in there. All right. Front shoulder is what we're going for. If you can line right there, Kyle. Uh, a little bit up this way. Jeremy just hit the bear with the with the stick, administering the drug. I'd say it only takes about five minutes for this bear to get into a deep sleep and be able to, uh, you know, be handled. So you can see they kind of got a landing pad set out and gonna fully pull this bear out onto the pad and start taking all the samples, uh, DNA. Um, they're gonna tag the bear, they're gonna tattoo the bear, um, and they're gonna eventually collar the bear and then uh, they're going to be monitoring vitals the entire time and taking the health of the bear uh, as number one priority uh, and, you know, successfully continuing on this study as the number two priority. So. While the medication takes effect, Jeremy begins assembling the collar. I might get up here to catch his head. One, two, three. Whoa, man. It's nothing short of breathtaking to be this close to the gaping maw of a grizzly bear. And these folks do it all the time. That being said, it's clear how much care and effort they put into this process. Every move is calculated and carried out with considerable purpose. There's no denying that this is stressful for the bear. However, the resulting mountain of data from these studies gives us a far clearer picture of how to manage for population health. Now we're gonna roll towards Ryan. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna weigh him. We're gonna bend his legs so he's fully on the tarp. We're gonna come into this weigh station that they're gonna set up. We'll hoist him up, get his official weight. And then we're going to back him down to this tree with his head uphill. We've got a snare around there, so if something were to go wrong, he's stuck here and we're going to be safe. So you ready? One, two, three. Oh boy. oh boy. He's a big boy. Okay, so now everyone grab your ropes and hold those up for me. We're gonna run our ropes. These two on. Now, everyone grab a pole, keep it from tipping, and try to keep it from going into the ground. If he's that big, he might fall through. Three more, one, two, three. Okay, hold. I got a ground. I got a ground. Yeah, he's five. Five sixty-five. The tarp weighs twenty-six. Okay, we can let him down. 
Now, um, spread the tarp out as best we can and get everything off the tarp but the bear. So Ryan, if you want to hook these on the bear's lips like this, okay. red, right. Red, bear's red. right, not your right. And then we'll put the other side back here with a double edged needle. As much bite as you can. Yep. Yep. So in the back, I'm sticking a double edged needle at 10 and 2 around this anus. And I'll put my clips red right, bare right also. And then we'll run the bioimpedance machine. Bioimpedance measures the percentage of the bear's body fat, which is a great indicator of his overall health. This number, compiled over time along with the data from other bears, will actually give an idea of population health. So this is bear 588, which was originally captured 2008 and hasn't been captured since. So he's 15 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. So it's a cool bear to get back on the system again. It's, it's and, and location of the initial capture? Caribou target, I didn't see the. Oh, really? Yep. Cool. So he's been moving around and stayed out of trouble all that time, and so that's cool. Wow. You got lazy again. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's on an easy meal. All right, so if you want to pick his head up, Ryan, I'll run the tape measure. So 85.7 for neck circumference. Yeah. So with toes, 13.7. Uh, let me get you the bite. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to yep. clip this on his tongue. Right there. Just, just get as much tongue as possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit more. Okay. Just about the same. So eagle eye from the tip here, tip toe, tip claws. So and then we'll pinch that in the back and just push. And when you feel it click through, then kind of twist and then save it. I'll have to keep the cap. Yeah, and it's gonna take some force. Yep, there you go. I'll pull it straight out. Let's see here. Okay, see how the sample's inside? Yep. That's what we want, so we'll save this. After we take a tissue sample, an additional ID tag is placed in the ear. With any luck, it will remain in place long after the collar has served its function and fallen off. because he has a huge head, so we don't have to get as tight on him. And so you kind of, right. this is your wear through just in case, kind of break yep. away apart, and then this is the... Yep, this is our cotton spacer that it'll last for, depending on how many holes we punch in it. We punch different amount of holes, it'll come off at different times. Okay. So we're going for two for him, so we'll punch three holes. And uh, this is set to go off 8 30, 22. So that's the plan. But these guys always get into scuffles, yep. and then uh, usually it comes off the top. This guy might have a decent shot. I mean, he's not super scarred up anywhere. No, nah, he's, he's ruling the roost out here, probably. So th this is your your GPS collar though, right? Because yep, this, this is, is more bang for the buck. You yep. want as much data yep. out of this bear as you can get because yep. he's more likely to shed this collar. Yeah, this is a iridium collar that will we can check on it on our computer every couple of days, go in there and see where he's at, and it'll download a few times a day. So divide by one hundred. When we do this, as long as they're down good, we'll we'll really get a good feel about the. Yeah. How it fits him. And so now try to pull it over his head. Pull the collar over his head? Yep. So, yeah. So we kind of want it where they can just. He could do it. Just barely get it over. Once it's collared, the bear goes back in the trap. One, two, three. Head up out of the ground as best as possible. Okay, one, two, three. Bring this up as close. You need to be careful of his hips, his ribs, his elbows, and his head. One more good pull. One, two, three. If you're wondering if this is thrilling and at times unsettling, it is.
We then depart to give the bear several hours of unperturbed rest, which allows the drug to fully wear off, and we return later in the day for its release. So there's our trap. Yep. I'll, I'll jump up here, flip around. We'll stay kind of close as we set stuff up, and then as yeah. we get ready, we'll run ropes through these trees and pull, pull from the truck. Okay. It feels a little odd, but uh, pull this rope and release the grizzly bear that we trapped this morning. Yes sir, that's how we do it. All right, you ready? Yep, let's get it. So I can drop this, right? Luck is sometimes a funny word for what happens. I say that I'm lucky to be here. We say we're lucky to get a bear in a trap. But the reality is, Jeremy and his team have been planning, preparing, and practicing for this all season. They've maximized their odds like any skilled hunter or trapper does, and, as luck would have it, they trapped another one. This male grizzly isn't quite as big as the first, but at 22 years old, it's a remarkable animal to be next to. A lot of the same samples are taken, though this time they insert what's called a passive integrated transponder or pit tag underneath the skin. Functionally, this bear can be scanned like the items at your local grocery store. The data gathered here is indispensable to scientists and wildlife management. Similar to tagging fish, it helps guide conservation strategies moving into the future. Believe me when I say that everyone here is rooting for this animal, which is why you should listen when they say, lock up your garbage and minimize bear attractants when you live and play in bear country. We just lifted a 372-pound grizzly bear in a box onto a trailer, um, all for for the good purpose of releasing it in a safe spot. So that's first for me. <laughs> okay, slow. Lift up. Go. We captured these bears a stone's throw from campgrounds, boat launches, and bars. In their combined 37 years, neither have been associated with conflict. Whether bears are able to behave like this in the future may just be up to you. <laughs> 